Have you ever had an idea that was so clear it was like a 3D movie? Have you ever told a friend about the idea and they told you, wow, if you could only make that into a business, you would be rich? Sound familiar? Welcome to Knowledge to Currency. I'm your host, Senator Porter, with my co-host, Roosevelt Williams III, and we're here to help you take action. This is free information. We only ask one thing, build a strong foundation and mindset. We have insight to help you get started. Most of us just need a push. All right. Welcome, welcome. This is the 20th episode of Knowledge of Currency. I'm your host, uh, Senator Porter, and you are? Roosevelt Williams III. The and third. There you go. <laughs> and we have our <laughs> special guest, Kenny Simpson from the Simpson team. Welcome to the show. What's up, gentlemen? What's Thank up? you. How are you doing today? I I feel a little underdressed, but yeah, <laughs> I, I, you're on more underdressed than me, so I'm feeling okay then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the yin and the yang. Dude, he's fly. Yeah, looking fly. fly. Appreciate you, Kenny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my uniform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True. Well, um, let's kind of go into it. I know you got a flight to catch because you're a jet setter. Not hey. really, but. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the whole purpose of our show, we kind of try to tell people ways that they could level up. Um, in San Diego or in California, it's expensive to live here. So we try to help people find ways that they can kind of make more income. So um, you're one of the people I wanted to have on the show. Number one, you got a podcast like me. Few more episodes more than me. It's all good. Um, you're also into mortgages. Yep. But you own real estate. Yep. And what are some of the other things you do? So uh, in real estate, we've done a lot of stuff. But so my wife does commercial. Mm -hmm. um, she's been doing that for almost 20 years. I do residential for 18. We did uh, own and operate and sell a property management company that had 1,475 units. <laughs> sold that. And then we um, built a real estate portfolio and uh, took a lot of, you know, a lot of hard work, effort, and traded up. And we do that. And we have a lot of passive income from that. And then um, when I sold the property management company, I said, well, I want to get into this social media, branding, whatever the hell it is. And I ended up in Gary Vee's office four months later in a 4D dive. And he's like, what are you doing here? I said, I don't really know. I just want to learn how to do this stuff. And uh, he says, well, what do you do? I told my background. He's like, well, just go back to San Diego and give it all away. What I know in real estate. So that's what started the podcast, the content and everything. Smart. So just like you guys, um, I want to get back. I want people to build wealth. I want them to learn about money. I think a lot of people, they don't teach us in school. They don't, or a lot of our parents don't know about it. Right. So we've got podcasts, YouTube, we've got everything out there. So there's really no excuse. Right. So I would tell first thing is first, get on YouTube, get on podcasts, start listening, mm -hmm. start getting educated and then get in the right rooms, you know? Yeah. And did you come from a wealthy family? Um, no, I mean, <laughs> not, not, uh, not like dirt poor, not wealthy. You know, sure. my dad probably made 150,000 a year. I don't sure. think that's anything. Um, I had a yard business at nine. Okay. I was hustling already. Right. Um, I did a lot of sports and then my dad, you know, left and then so is me. And then basically from 18, my mom's like, well, I don't have any money. And kind of, so I pay for school. And from there, I basically moved out here on my own. Everybody's like, you're going to fail. You're never going to make it. Where did you move from? Uh, that time I lived in Westlake, Thousand Oaks. I had to go to, uh, Miami for a year. Oh, and that's then too bad. I drove out here <laughs> and everybody's like, thought I was going to fail Okay, mm -hmm. and still here. My sister said, you make it a year, I'll come out. She did. So, nice. um, so I didn't really grow up. Like my dad was like, uh, it's kind of funny. My dad was just like a W2 guy, okay. like a corporate guy still is. My brother's an entrepreneur. My sister's an entrepreneur and I'm an entrepreneur. We just kind of saw that. We're like, yeah, I don't want that. You know, <laughs> we saw him a long time at a company. He got let go yeah. and just kind of pushed out the door after 18 years. You're like, that doesn't seem right. Yeah. That's so I cool. think when we saw that, we were like, yeah, I don't want that. So, um, I grew up, if I had the internet, like these kids do now, I would definitely, would have been all over it for sure. YouTube, I would have been, I know my personality, so <laughs> for sure. Just like learning and absorbing. So then um, you, you said you had multifamily property. Yep. So what, what was the reason why you got that instead of a single family? Yeah, so um, one of the good things is we manage a lot of property. Mm -hmm. So we managed um, mainly multifamily, probably the large property is 150 units. Okay. And then the smallest was just a condo or a house. Um, number one, 
if you would asked me this question 10 years ago, I probably would have given you a different answer because I wasn't smart, educated experience. But the houses are okay, but if somebody leaves or somebody doesn't pay, there's nobody else to pay. Right. There's the mortgages due, the tax are due, the insurance is due. So we come to realize after managing houses, we're like, the profit wasn't as good. Okay. And then we realize, you know, the more you scale, the better. So one of my buildings is 30 units. If somebody, one person vacates, I'm not going to probably affect me that much. Sure. If 10 people vacate, I probably could still pay my mortgage. Okay. So for us, it's like, we just know bigger was better. It's not for everybody, but I'd rather somebody buy a four unit than a house because if one leaves, you still got three paying probably your mortgage. Sure. And so we've seen the ugly side of property management, owning properties where somebody can sit in the property, not pay for six months, make people's lives hell. They're writing checks, then they leave, then they got to, you know, fix it. Sure. And they're like, this is crazy. So scale is better. And then like, how'd you go through pandemic? That had to be tough, right? Pan, uh, this last one? Yeah. Uh, no. Um, so pandemic hit and everybody freaked out. They're like, nobody's going to pay rent. We're all going to, it's everything's going to go to hell in a handbasket. <laughs> and um, I mean, Monty even knows this. I had like, we, we know a lot of very wealthy people in San Diego, a lot of property. Sure. Since we did the property manager company, a lot of people calling us for advice, this and that. So everybody started calling me like freaking out. I go, first of all, guys, you're rich, so I'm not sure why you're worried. <laughs> and secondly, we need a time out and pause because um, we don't know what's going to happen. So sure. why don't we just hit the brakes? Well, nobody's going to pay rent. I'm like, I think the media is really blowing. So the media really ran with this thing, nobody's going to pay rent. Right. But when the media did that, it actually screwed up a lot of things. It's It scared the banks. Mm -hmm. So, like, for example, like people that do, my, like my wife, commercial loans, nobody really knows this. The banks were getting calls saying, hey, what if my tenants don't pay? What does that mean? And they're kind of like, why are we getting all these calls? So it went from like nothing to worry about to the banks got the call. And they're like, you know what? We're just going to hit pause and not lend right now. Like what? That's terrible. So because they're like, why would I lend when I'm getting all these calls? And the calls right. didn't come from tenants. The calls came from owners. Sure. And then we made it a month and then two months and three months. Everybody started realizing, I'm like, guys, did we die? No. Right. Did you lose all your money? Nope. Did you lose all your wealth? Nope. Are your tenants paying? They're like, actually, yeah. I'm like, because they want a place to live. Right. So I did hear these outlying stories where people didn't pay and this and that. But I, between all the people on my podcast and everybody I know, I was able to assess quickly tens of thousands of units with phone calls. And then after a month or two, I realized, like, this isn't really happening. This sure. is all overblown. The media ran with it. It was a good story. Mm -hmm. So actually during the pandemic, we did really well because um, people paid and then um, 2020, we didn't raise rents, but with inflation and everything, 2021, mm -hmm. rent raises were big this last year. So it's actually for apartment owners, just like the last recession, mm -hmm. it was good. It was good for you. Yeah, though. good for rents. And did you end up buying any new property? Yeah, we bought a building uh, this year. Congrats. Yep. yep. Bought another building. And then um, I would say, though, right now, a lot of people that are big buyers, they're not buying. They're mm -hmm. kind of cautious. I think they're just, you know, I came up with this phrase, sellers want the price of yesterday and buyers want the price of tomorrow. Right. And they're just slowly, the gap is closing to where the reality is, is like sellers, you either going to drop your price or take it off the market. But if you're not getting an offer, there's a reason, right? Yeah. Nobody wants to pay you. So that's happening in all asset classes, especially multifamily around the country. So the big syndicators that I know that I've interviewed, they're just chilling. They're not buying, right. but they're going to buy soon. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're just, just kind of stacking cash, waiting, and their investors are like, hello, when are we going to be you know, want to deploy money? But so it's kind of across the board, but, um, but I think activity is already starting to pick back up, you know? Nice. You have a question for him? Yeah. Um, how would you describe yourself, an introvert or, or extrovert? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I think most people describe me as an extrovert, but as Monty will defend <laughs> me and know, I'm actually uh, more of a homebody than you think. I'm more of a private person. So mm -hmm. I get up at 3.30. I like to spend time by myself and stuff. Mm -hmm. So um, I think I'm a mix. Mm -hmm. But I can go into a crowded room. And I can do really, really well. I don't mind get on stage, all that. But I can also be lazy and sit at home and not <laughs> go hang out with people, and I'm okay with that. Like, right. I can be by myself, and I'm completely comfortable. So I don't know. I'm like a mix. Okay, that's I'm like a mutt. <laughs> 
mixed so, salad. You no, know, the reason yeah. why I asked that question because uh, you know having a podcast and you know um, being on it, you can gain energy by being by yourself. But then when you know when you're around a lot of people, that's when you give energy. And I just see that you know you're like a light bulb. You know, you yeah. coming in and uh, I can feel your energy, positive energy. Cool. That's right. Um, yeah. So before I started the podcast and did video, if you put a camera or anything in front of my face, I would stall. I wouldn't do it. Okay. So I had to just literally have a conversation with myself. Like, if we're going to do this, you need to get over yourself mm. and you, if we're going to do this. Right. Even though it takes time to find your rhythm, your rhyme, your flow, mm -hmm. because you think this is you being normal on video. You're like, who is that guy? <laughs> um, it just takes time to be comfortable. So, um, but I think I've become more of an extrovert, you know, over time. But, right. you know, I think some by people confuse the energy with, you know, like what's reality. <laughs> That's why, yeah, I, like I had to gauge it for myself. I said, extrovert, introvert. Yeah. So I just wanted to, you That's know, uh, nail it. And uh, how many podcasts do you have so far? What are you up to? I mean, we're probably closing 170, 180. Wow. Yeah. 180. We're at 20. That's good. Yes. So yeah. we, we, we make a mile. Congrats. Congrats to you guys. <laughs> yeah. The fact that you started one and you're doing it, it's like, Oh yeah, crazy, right? Yeah, when I started explaining people what it, I mean, my uncle, he was the worst. He was like, <laughs> "So you're doing this? So how much money have you made?" I'm like, he just doesn't get it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. it's not about that. Yeah. So when did the checks roll in? And I was like, I just don't even talk about yeah. it. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Even <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, getting back to multifamily. So let's say, for instance, you have somebody that wants to get in. I got a friend that has a bunch of single families. Or, no, he has one multifamily, but a bunch of single families. What would he do to kind of prep himself to get into, let's say, like a 30 unit or something like that? Yeah, so what a lot of people do is you might hear somebody that's like, how that guy, how's that guy own 500 units or 1,000 units? Like, and right. he doesn't raise money. How is that possible, right? right. Um, and if you sat down and heard their story, they started with a two unit, then a four unit, and then, you know, it starts scaling, right? Mm -hmm. So once you get, you know, like him, he might go, I might sell the houses strategically and then take that 1031 into a bigger building, then maybe fix that up, raise rents, you know, basically recalibrate that asset okay. to where somebody's going to come in and years down the road and pay you more. And then you exit into a bigger asset. Okay. So for anybody getting started, you could start with two units and maybe you want to end out at 30. Okay. Most people do that through cash outs. Do you either have cash out, 1031, the Burr model, okay. or you might have a business where you make a lot of cash mm -hmm. and you're able just to keep deploying and buying real estate, you know? Okay. So. What's, your, what's your goal as far as, uh, do you want to get like a crazy, like, I don't, I don't know, like a 500 unit place or anything like that? Yeah, you know, it's kind of funny. I don't, um, it's kind of funny because you get asked that question. It's mm -hmm. like, I don't really think of the goal. Right. Um, our goal like now is to, the first goal is to buy a building every year. A lot okay. of it's for number one, it's to keep you on your game to keep you for tax benefits. It's huge. Cause we okay. do something called cost segregation. So we take a building and we break it down and we accelerate depreciation faster so we can wipe our income and okay. pay no tax legally. Nice. Um, and so we do that. And then the other thing is um, we rent now. So I, I've owned homes. I've, this is the one thing I always talk about in my podcast. So I rent and people think it's funny. So um, we sold everything we have. We rent where we kind of want to own because I'm, you know, probably two buildings away to where I'll make enough cash flow. They'll pay for my house, my lifestyle and everything. So when I wake nice. up in the morning and I do a loan or I do this or that, that is, I can just say that money is going to another building. I don't have to worry about the bills. Nice. So we're really close. So my, my real official goal is just to get to that. Once you get to that, yeah, I'd sure in 10 years, I'd love to be at, you know, 500 to a thousand units okay. just scaling. Yeah. And you going to still manage them all? Uh, no, we don't manage now. Oh, so okay, okay. when we sold the management, we have somebody else manage it cause it's time. The only thing we really manage, which is minimal is our vacation rentals. Okay. But otherwise, um, we just don't do it. It's just a time sucker. So what That's we smart. did is we basically got rid of the pot, got rid of the property manager company and really sat down and we're going to have a family. We have two girls and we're like, okay, we're going to have less time. 
so where's my best ROI? Like, well, where am I gonna make the most money, right? Mm -hmm. And so we realized doing financing for the time and effort, we can't beat that. Mm -hmm. So let's do that. The real estate thing we'll keep doing. And then anything else that comes down the road in the future will be, it's probably gonna be more selling our time or experience and charging for that, right? right? Again, that's where I can do that. So this is being around a lot smarter people than me. <laughs> and I realize like people will pay you a lot for your experience and time. And yeah. so that's probably the next chapter, you know? I mean, shoot, that we paid for a mastermind we're in together. So exactly. I wasn't cheap. So yeah. 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 <laughs> well, because you, you pay because you want to get data to be faster. Yeah. Like you can get there maybe years on your own, but if you can get there faster and you have the money to pay, pay. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. How can I make my long journey your shortcut? Yeah, absolutely. Right. And uh, for our listeners that are tuning in, uh, how would you uh, define a, the acronym BUR? Uh, you know, buy, um, renovate. I think it's buy, renovate, raise rent, refinance, and repeat. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very, very. Like, if I can remember strategy. that one, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, I think that's what it is. Yeah. Um, yes, <laughs> and you've used that strategy. Yeah, we use it with houses, and then we've used it with apartment buildings. So, so you own just in California? Or? Just San Diego. Yep. Really? And we're, we, we are partners, small partners in deals, syndicators, just more like people we knew gave them money and that. So, but yeah, okay. outside. So yep. like silent, like you do all the work. Yeah. Yeah. And I think because <laughs> another, a lot of people were like, are you going to raise money? So we kind of, we thought about it. We're not sure. But so what I've learned from other people is sometimes you just invest with people yeah. because you believe in them, right. you believe in the product and you want to learn how they do things. So maybe I'll throw you 50, hundred grand or more. And yes, I believe in, yes, I'll maybe make a two, three X or more, but I'm going to see how you run things, do things. And I'm going to learn from you. So why I'm learning, I'm getting paid too. Mm. It's not a bad thing. Which is actually yeah. smart. Yeah. I mean, it's like the mastermind, but you actually can make money off of it. Yeah. I mean, you know, I didn't finish school, but you know, you see people that pay a hundred grand for school. They come out. What'd you learn? Uh, I don't really know. Right. You know, or it's like stuff that you can't even use. Yeah. Yeah. So Which, unfortunately, yeah. yeah, I think we're all, they're all learning that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's right. Yeah. We learn in life, you know, learning, implementing, focusing and evaluating yeah. as we go and uh, definitely getting that return on investment. Yeah. So yeah, we're glad you're here because we have some investments you can invest in as well, you know, and, and get some on the job training from us too. Oh, there so you go. Put that in there. But. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> for, um, for the mortgage side of things, because that's you do um, residential. What are you seeing as far as the market shifting and how how is it at work now compared to how the craziness the last two years? Yeah, I mean the craziness was. Uh, Probably uncomfortable for everybody. Sure. Um, I don't think, I actually went from more of a direct lender, and you know the business too, mm -hmm. was literally transitioning to broker, which I'm thrilled. I'm glad, I wish I had done this years ago. Sure. And I was in the middle of transitioning when COVID hit and moving my stuff over, which took longer because the BRE and delays. Right. And so I went right into the refi boom not really set up the process <laughs> stuff. So I had, you know, Learned me and Rosa fly. team, but it was just a, a nightmare, let's be honest. And sure. so I had to work through a lot of issues. Um, so now that was great. Learned a lot. You know, now I'm here. Um, I built the team. I'm actually probably overstaffed on purpose. Sure. Um, nice. I've That's learned good. from, I basically called, I'm like, who's somebody smart I can call the business? You know, and I'm actually, that's where I'm flying, flying to UWM tomorrow. Okay. And so some of uh, Matt's right-hand guys, I said, okay, what, what should I be doing here? They're like, look, Matt just stays overstaffed. That's why his turn times, he has the best service in the business. He has sure. the best. And so um, they're like, you notice, like you probably can get busier. I'm like, yeah. They're like, then why would you remain understaffed? So now I just have you know, the marketing and I have a team. Mm -hmm. So really the goal is, is a lot of content, now out there meeting realtors, all this, which I didn't have time to do right. and helping them grow their business through content and stuff. So all the stuff I learned from content, now I'm just sitting down with realtors and saying, hey, look, I can share all this stuff with you. Which Let's just team up. What makes you more of an asset. Exactly. Because they don't know how to do it. For whatever reason, with, with a lot of people may not understand, with real, realtors, real estate, mortgage, it's like the stone age when it comes to technology. And it's kind of crazy because... You need a mortgage, you need loans and leverage and all that stuff, but none of them really know how to do it. No one knows what to do, or they're working for a company that's so compliance driven that they won't let them say anything on 
on television or online or that's where I was at. Crazy, the internet or social media. Monty knows about that. Yeah, heaven, heaven forbid you say, hey, rates are low, and they might fire <laughs> you. So um, so how, how are you getting around that part of the business and getting them comfortable? Yeah, so being with the right, um, I'm with C2 Financial. Um, I just set the owner down, uh, David, and went <laughs> to lunch. And I know, I just went to lunch. I said, hey, look, this is, I was trying to do it here. I was trying to do it there. I was clear, I got there, and they're like, you can't do it. I'm like, well, that's what we talked about, so why did I come here? And I'm here, and this is what I want to do. I'm not breaking the law. I, right. you know, give me the guidelines. Right. And then he basically turned to the team and said, guys, we just got to let him run. Let him do his thing. Like, let me do it. Right. So all the stuff I wanted to do now, we wanted to do earlier, but we couldn't do it where we were at. Restricted. So we would literally go and stop, and I was like, what are we doing here? Right. So I would have started things two years ago. So realtors, you just figure out what you can do. There's a the compliance, but a lot of it for them is coaching them how to talk on camera, right? right? How to like shoot videos, how to just like get on a video and tell them who you are, right? right. Um, showing them all the things we're doing from content and things. So that's why I tell them, I go, look, I never went after realtors because I had nothing to offer you. They're like, what? I said, okay, I have good rates and good service and a flyer. Like everybody, everybody has, that. has that. But yeah. what I know I have now is nobody has this. It's right. very far and few between. It's not that I'm better. It's like, I put all this time, money, effort, and all this. I'm like, I, I don't know anybody else who spent the amount of money probably being in the right rooms and the right people. Mm -hmm. Like, And you know how it is. We just talked about the mastermind. Yeah. So I'm now passing this on to them, and they're clearly seeing the value. So that's right. it. So I go in a meeting, and I talk all about what they can do in this. At the end, I go, oh, by the way, I do these loans if you want to do it. And they're like, they love it because it was about them. It's not about me, 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 you know? Sure. And then... The, it's just really purchases right now, as you know, refis or if they got to do them, they're doing them for probably cash out right. or divorce or separation or, you know, split up or death. Right. Um, it's pre pretty much purchases. And then right now it's a lot of first time home buyers that are really uneducated. So you're having to sit them down and go, you know, here's the payment, here's the tax benefit. You know, they really need a lot of handholding. And I noticed that new agents that never seen a rate above four, yeah, they they're, no they, they're like, they don't even have to sell or talk to them. You're like, so that's why I'm like, make sure you're with a good LO or somebody that can speak mm -hmm. like intelligently and know what they're doing. Because, you know, if you're experienced LO, this is where you're gonna shine. If you're a newbie, you're, you're either, you might be out of the business, it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be tough right now, unless you can grind and hustle, right? So. Yeah. I, I was at an open house and met a young agent maybe been in the business 16 months and I, oh this is the easiest job ever i'm going to get a lamborghini and and i'm like whoa this is a race for like what probably six months ago so i was like i don't get that lamborghini yet because the rates could change yeah. <laughs> and they're like well man i'm doing so well i'm like yeah but what do you do the market changes so then i saw that guy later and he's like man i'm glad i didn't spend the money <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yeah, i've been in the business a while so Markets go. I think rates will drop again. I don't know when. Yeah, but I, I believe they will. Not. Yeah, I mean, we just got to get in, it's inflation. Yeah, exactly. We got to go through the cycle of the the things. Got to calm down. Yeah. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You have another question. No, I just want to see. Uh, just say how awesome this, this is. Is there any like ten points or um, a couple of uh, self starters? Because with waking up at three a.m. in the morning, you know, uh, you know what gets you excited. Life, <laughs> seriously. Um, maybe I'm odd, maybe I'm weird, but we just get another day. Absolutely. Like, I don't know. Like, I think we live in a great country. Mm -hmm. I don't take it for granted. I think we're lucky. Right. I think um, a lot of people are entitled. They just don't realize how good it is till the rug's pulled out, you know? True. Um, that is, but you know, I've got a family, I got kids. I, I, I try to uh, be an influence for people too. If people are gonna watch me, like, why don't I do something good for the world, right? Mm -hmm. We need more of it. Right. So I need to be example to everybody around me and motivation and um, I don't know, I kind of feel like that's just me. So I think for social media and the content stuff, I'm putting out as much positive stuff I can to help people, whether it's motivation or this. So. And but me really getting up at 3.30, the selfish part of it is um, I have kids and I started figuring out if I don't get up early, I don't get me time. If I don't get me time to whatever it is, you want to pray, you want to meditate, you want to read, you want to, you know, whatever it is you want to do. If you don't get your me time and you're woken up by a kid, yay, get up, dad, or whatever, that's not going to work for me um, in my personality. 
But the fact that I get me time and I get that extra hour or two a day, that adds up over a week. It adds up over a month. It adds up over a year. And that's really been compounding. And I'm telling you, that really has moves the needle. And I always tell people, like, if you want to move the needle, just get up an hour earlier and spend the time on you. Right. Work out, meditate, whatever. And over time, that will move mountains. Um, and that's a good hack. So, But really selfishly, it's about... Um, I, and I don't drink coffee. I just get out of bed. So it's just really, I just like, let's go, you know, let's, let's yeah. do this. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you've been waking up that at least I know we were getting up at four thirty. That was over three years ago. The time at Jarvis. Yeah. Yeah. So we started running the stairs by ourselves yeah, before. Oh yeah. Oh my God. That was yeah. so hard. Yeah. yeah. He's a lot more fit than I am, by the way. I don't know about that. Yeah. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but yeah, that was first time unless I was out all night in Miami that I ever got up at 4 30. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie, but yeah. no, it does make a difference if you do get up. Um, I, I'm more like six. That's three. good. Yes, yeah, so, six is good for me. Like the sun's just coming up. I walk the dog. Um, I don't check any emails or nothing. And then I go to the gym, work out, come back, shower, and start the day from there. That's, that's nice. kind of how I do it. Like, yeah, I mean, I kind of just... I don't have kids though. Yeah. But I just, a lot of stuff now is I'm really trying to focus on working on other stuff we're working on, whether it's okay. content or this or that. So um, my brain is a little different at that time. So I'm, I'm good at the writing, the reading, it's slower. As soon as I hit about seven, I notice I'm like, my brain starts waking up. It's like, ah, I'm done with that. So mm. when it's that hour, I've noticed uh, it's just, it's my brain functions different. It's really good for certain things. It is quiet. Like yeah, it's, I, it's dead. And at nighttime, my brain is just done. I'm just <laughs> exhausted. So I know people, oh, I'm going to stay up and grind style, I mean, you know, if I have to for work, but not stuff that it's a passion or project. It's just not coming. It's not flowing <laughs> not out the same. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, I guess, too, I'm, I'm more efficient. Like, I know a, a thing when I was younger might take me four or five hours. Now I can, because I'm better at it, could do it in an hour or two. So then yeah. I can kind of time block those things. Yeah. Um, any books you're reading right now? You know, I honestly don't read a lot of books, mm -hmm. rarely. Um, I listen to a ton of content. Yep. I consume a lot. Right. Um, mm -hmm. I read articles, but I probably just consume, I would say, on a daily average, at least two to four hours of content. Yeah, you're like me. So At bed in the morning, like this morning, I went and walked. I'll yeah. just listen to content. I get up. It's like as soon as I get up, I just start listening to content. Like so, mm -hmm. the reason why I started a podcast because I was listening to so much content that I was like, listen, I need to start putting out more than I'm taking yep. in. Yep. Because I feel like everyone's a consumer, almost like you spend money. What are you making money? So then I was like, I'm gonna make a podcast. I'm gonna start to put these thoughts out so that people can hear them. And another thing, if you just read one book a month, you're like in the top 1% oh, for of sure. people that, like yeah. most people don't even read that book. Mm. So I, I'm like you, I don't read, I learn a lot of stuff though, but I don't really read a paperback book or, or you know, a hardcover book or anything, not this yeah. time. I listen to like all different types of podcasts, everything, mm -hmm. not just real estate. Probably real estate, I said, oh no, tons of different things. Right? And a lot of times I love, if I see somebody like a biography about somebody just learning how they <laughs> came about or, you know, anything like just yeah, history, anything, thing. Yeah. just like, how do we all get here? Right. Or, you know, how did this happen? It's or that a, happened? Right. Sometimes you just get on YouTube on the way weirdest thing. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, wait, what am I watching? I've been to watch this like 20 minutes. Yeah. So I'm, I'm the same as you definitely consume a lot. Yeah. That's right. It, it's something about reading, though. You know, when you do read it and, and you're able to uh, digest it, you know, and when, you, when you're looking at it and, and thinking about it, you know, so I am a, uh, an, an, an avid reader. Oh, nice. However, I do see myself uh, consuming more uh, podcasts. Uh, I am a big history buff. I do believe history is a shortcut to greatness, but uh, definitely having that mind to watch what you're consuming. You know, and make sure that uh, it's aligned with your purpose in life or it's it's jet fuel, it's rocket fuel that's going to propel you, you know, to the level of greatness you want to be at. 
So I mean, I'm jealous of you. I, you can read like that. My brain, it's tough with my brain and my right. attention. So I agree. Um, if I'm reading, I got to really be and it's like, I can't be, I don't have people, I don't have people sit at Starbucks to read. I'm like, how is that possible? No, I, I got to be in a room by myself. Like with jazz music and no words <laughs> and like nothing. I mean, I'm distracted by a damn bird flying outside, you know? I mean, I see people on the beach or this, I'm like, how do they read? It's crazy. I'm, I'm literally jealous. Like, yeah. Okay. So when you say that, it's like, I'm, we're built different, but I'm just like, so how I hacked it, I'm like, I just got to consume a lot more content, you know? Right, right. But I'll listen to books on tape and stuff, you know? But it's not the same as reading, you know? Nah, but you're learning. So before you go, because I know you got a flight to catch, um, is there any big announcements that you got to tell the world? Ah, uh, let's see, big announcements. Uh, the one thing we've been saying is um, this year, uh, we've been working on it for years. Um it's just excuses why it's not done, but we're, we are going to launch a real estate course. Okay. Very nice. Yeah. Very so, um, I'm really excited about it. Uh, I feel like it'll be very, very valuable just because we coach people daily on buying and stuff and the knowledge it's, it's, it's I always tell people, it's not that I'm better than you. I just have a lot of experience and I'm like, I'd rather you just not take my course and mm -hmm. pay for it and not like lose the millions of million dollars I lost and the headaches and the stress <laughs> and the, all this, like, you know, yeah, I can, I can, I can, give you, I can give you the hack. Yeah. Right. yeah. So on our way, so we've done the management, the, the finance and all that. So it's rare to have all the angles down. It is. Right. And, and I realize that. Yeah. Leveraging. That's what I said. Yeah, Most people landing. have bought or managed and they didn't do the financing. So, right. um, we're going to launch that. I think that's kind of the big thing and then just keep doing our thing. Okay. Um, well, I know you got to go, so I want to tell you I really appreciate you coming on the show. So yeah. Our little show is growing, so having people like you just helps keep the the pendulum swaying left yeah. and right. So I appreciate that. Um, and you got anything you want? I just wanted to just say, uh, you know, a thank you again. Mm -hmm. uh, big things have small beginnings, and I appreciate the drills and the gems you shared with us today. Cool. Well, I'm, I'm stoked for you guys. Honestly, 20 episodes is a big deal. Anybody Great. listening? 95% of podcasts don't make it past, is it five or 10? So you yeah. guys are in the five percentile. So just keep it going. Just keep it going. And it, it gets better and better, honestly. Well, now nah, we've, we've seen it getting better. So, um, but yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate you guys having me on. It's yeah, fun. I appreciate you. it. Um, and that's a wrap for now. It's the Currency episode 20. Peace. Peace. Peace.